hanging over you where your clamp was. Where your clamp was, right there. Now then, rotate the pump. Just hold your hand on it and let him rotate the pump. Now you're going right. Now get after it. The purpose of a good equipment maintenance program is to avoid unnecessary repairs. If you take proper care of it, you'll have reliable equipment with fewer repairs and less downtime. You don't have time to disassemble the fluid end of a mud pump every other day. This means that when you do go into a fluid end, you want to replace every part that doesn't have at least 75 hours of wear left in it. In this program, we'll look at liners and pistons for triplex mud pumps. Most triplex pumps are very similar, so if you pay close attention to the procedures used on this oil well triplex pump, you'll be able to tackle almost all of Sedco's triplex mud pumps. On most triplex pumps, you have access to the liner and piston from above the cradle. On these pumps, the piston rod is in two pieces to make its removal easier. After removing the extension rod clamp, you can unscrew the piston rod extension. Then by attaching a piston rod removal tool to the piston rod and pony rod and rotating the pump, the piston and rod are pulled free of the liner. The liner is pulled from the fluid chamber using the liner retainer nut, which holds the liner in position. This nut has three set screws which catch on the liner and pull it out when the nut is unscrewed. Once you have these parts where you can inspect them, you need to know how to tell if they're still in good condition. Replace a liner if you've already run three pistons in that one liner. Usually by this time, the liner will cause pistons to fail after about 50 hours of operation. That's not acceptable. If you've run fewer pistons through a liner, feel and look inside it for wash cuts, cracks, or grooves. If you find any, replace the liner. You'll know a worn piston rubber by the absence of the protruding lip. This rubber is in good condition. More likely, you'll find a wash cut like this. You should obviously replace a worn or wash cut piston rubber. The piston body itself is bad if the shoulder that mates with the rubber has become rounded. You might also find a wash cut piston. Replace it. Another evidence of a worn piston body is a chewed up rubber. When a piston or liner is worn, the gap between them enlarges, allowing high pressure mud to force the rubber to squeeze into the gap. This results in pinching and chewing of the rubber. Likewise, a worn rubber allows mud to get by it and begin cutting into the liner and piston. So you see, it's important that you find and replace any worn or damaged parts before they ruin other parts. And when you find a bad part, check the others, because one bad expendable part can take others with it. The parts are made so you can replace a rubber and reuse the piston. Now this is okay if you're using oil wells reinforced piston rubber, but on pumps run at high pressure like ours, Mission recommends we change their piston body with the rubber because it takes so little wear on a piston before it starts ruining non-reinforced rubbers. About the only times you have to replace piston rods are when they break or when their threads are damaged beyond repair. Before you disassemble a pump to check these parts, turn the pump off and make sure that it can't be accidentally started. Close the suction and discharge lines, then drain the pump. There should be a drain line from the suction line or manifold. Shut off the liner flushing system and drain the flushing sump if you use it. Disconnect the flushing hose from the piston rod. Remove the extension rod clamp. Rotate the pump a little so you can unscrew the piston rod extension. Don't use a pipe wrench on these rods. Use two open end wrenches. Slip the piston rod removal tool over the button on the pony rod. Now rotate the pump by turning the jack shaft until you can screw the removal tool onto the piston rod.
Now, by rotating the pump again, the pony rod will pull the piston out of the liner. If the liner isn't due for replacement, feel inside it for signs of damage. You should also look inside the liner to ensure it doesn't need to be replaced. If you are replacing the liner, turn the set screws in the liner retainer nut until they hit the liner and then back them off a little. Now back the retaining nut off the liner adapter. The set screws will catch the liner flange and pull it out of the fluid chamber. With the liner and liner gasket removed, wash the fluid chamber out with water. The liner makes a seal in the fluid chamber against the wear plate. You should feel the wear plate for corrosion or damage. This is especially important if you're changing liner sizes. Use emery cloth to smooth and clean rough spots. If there's more than minor damage to the wear plate, pull it and replace it. Use a wear plate puller to loosen the plate. The puller head fits in a recess in the wear plate. Tighten the puller's set screws in the holes of the wear plate. Attach the threaded bar and puller plate and pull the wear plate by tightening the nut against the puller plate. Take out the wear plate gasket and replace it if it's at all damaged. Now check the piston for damage or wear. Remember that we want to avoid repeated downtime. It's false economy to try to run a worn piston or rubber in a pump because it'll ruin a liner which costs six times as much as a piston and rubber. A good rig practice is to have spare pistons assembled on rods ready to go into the pump to save time. Be sure to store these away from heat and moisture and don't lay them on the side of the piston rubber. To replace the piston assembly, place the rod in the backup wrench on your pump skid. Remove the piston rod nut using a splined nut wrench. Don't use a pipe wrench. It'll crush the nut. Slide the retaining plate and piston and rubber off the rod. An oil well piston also has a back seal and retainer behind the piston which are replaced with the piston. There's also an O-ring behind the piston which should be replaced. If you're reusing the rod, clean out the flushing system holes and passages in that rod. Clean and inspect the threads on the rod, oil it, and install a new O-ring. Clean all the parts of the new piston assembly and install them. The back seal retainer and back seal the piston and rubber, and rubber retainer. Now apply anti-seize compound to the threads of the rod and nut and install the nut. Tighten the nut to 500 foot-pounds torque. One man can easily make up the nut with the splined nut wrench and a short cheater. Now don't confuse this with the piston on a duplex pump, which requires two men on a cheater to make up the nut. If you pull the liner wear plate, clean out the fluid chamber again so the plate and gasket can make a good seal. Install the gasket and then the newer clean wear plate it'll probably need a little persuading. The new liner is protected by a coat of paint. 
we have to remove the first couple of inches of paint at both ends of the liner. It's usually been taped at these places to make your job a little easier. Clean inside the liner with solvent. Once you have a clean liner with no paint at the ends, install the liner gasket in its groove in the liner. Don't grease or oil this gasket. Now slide the gasket into the liner into the liner adapter on the pump. Grease the exposed part of the liner, the threads of the liner adapter, and inside the liner nut. Take the set screws out of the nut and screw the nut onto the liner adapter. Tighten the nut with a bar and sledgehammer. Feel inside the liner to make sure the gasket is seated properly. Put the set screws loosely back into the liner nut. Grease or oil the piston rubber and liner. Now this is vital because it protects the rubber during the first few pump cycles until the pump is well primed. Line up the piston assembly at the entering bevel of the liner. It's important that you line it up perfectly. The lip of the rubber should just fit inside the bevel all around the liner. Feel with your hands to be sure. If you force a misaligned piston into the liner, you'll ruin the rubber. So line it up and push it into the liner by putting a block of wood or piston rod remover tool between the pony rod and piston rod and then rotating the pump. Now you can reinstall the piston rod extension. Don't use a pipe wrench. Before you clamp the extension to the pony rod, clean the buttons on the ends of the rods. Any grit or burrs on the ends of these rods can keep you from getting a good tight clamp. Broken rods are usually the result of clamps working loose so make sure you get a good, clean, tight clamp. Reinstall the mud baffle and the flushing lines and fill the flushing sump if you use it. Now you can close the pump drain and open the suction and bypass lines. Start the liner flushing pump, the power end lubrication pump, the charging pump, and then the mud pump. Bring it slowly up to operating pressure, circulating mud to the pits until you're sure the pump's operating correctly. Let's review the procedure. See if you remember the steps. First, shut off the mud pump. Turn off the charging pump, lubrication pump, and flushing pump. Close the discharge and suction lines and open the drain line. Remove the extension rod clamp and the piston rod extension. Use open end wrenches on the rods. Attach the piston rod remover tool to the pony rod and piston rod. Rotate the pump by turning the jack shaft, pulling the piston rod out of the liner. Feel and look in the liner for wash cuts, cracks, or grooves. Replace such a damaged liner. Replace the liner regardless after running three pistons in it. To pull a liner, turn the set screws in the liner retainer nut until they just hit the liner, then back them off a little. Turn the retainer nut to back the liner out of the fluid chamber. Clean the fluid chamber. Check the liner wear plate for corrosion or wash cuts. Repair minor damage or replace the wear plate and wear plate gasket. Use a wear plate puller to loosen the wear plate. Replace the piston and rubber if they're damaged or worn. Use only a splined nut wrench on the piston rod nut. Tighten the nut with only one man on a short cheater. Remove paint from the ends of a new liner. Clean inside the liner and install the liner gasket. Install the liner in the fluid chamber. Grease the liner adapter and retainer nut and tighten the nut against the liner. Oil the piston and liner 
and line the piston up in the entering bevel of the liner. Push it in by rotating the pump. Reinstall the piston rod extension and clamp. Connect the flushing hose and install the mud baffle and fill the flushing sump. Close the drain valve. Open the suction and bypass valves. Start the lubrication pump, the flushing pump and charge pump, and then the mud pump. While the pump is running, you should frequently check the flushing system. Make sure the entire piston and liner area is flushed with a good spray of water. Look for mud leaking out of the liner, indicating a piston or liner failure. If the pump starts losing pressure, or if the mud gauge bounces more than usual, this too indicates a problem in the fluid end. Whenever the pump is stopped, check the extension rod clamps for tightness. When changing pistons or liners, remember that you can usually run three pistons before you change a liner. Learn these procedures. Remember that we're trying to avoid repeated pump failures and keep this in mind when evaluating parts for replacement. We trust you'll do these things because if you do, you can avoid unnecessary repairs and downtime and count on your pump to keep your drilling rig in operation. If you do it right, you won't have to do it again so soon.